Hello, welcome to the Market Carver. I'm Adam Harder, Chief Investment Officer, along with Andrew Thrasher, a Chartered Market Technician and Portfolio Manager. Thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. We're going to cover some of the topics from this week's investment meeting. The three we're going to hit you with this week. Uh, first is going to be around the labor market and specifically around what we've seen out of the tech sector, margin compression uh, for S&P 500 companies, and also bank uh, lending standards, something that can be influential in terms of growth uh, in the economy. So we'll start off with the tech layoffs, but more specifically, just a couple words uh, about the labor market, which has been a really interesting dynamic uh, going back all the way into 2022. One of the very explicit goals uh, by the Federal Reserve has been to raise the unemployment rate. Uh, they wanted to break the backs of inflation, partly by having unemployment uh, go up, which can soften demand and, and bring inflation down. And the labor market has been stubbornly strong. Um, in many, many sectors, uh, the, the state and local governments uh, have their coffers pretty well stacked. And believe it or not, they account for over 10 percent of the labor force. Uh, so a very strong component there. So most pockets of the labor market have been stubbornly strong, despite the Federal Reserve's plan. That's been a, a good thing. Uh, and in fact, as we hit 2023, it seems to be accelerating, not slowing down. So we'll see if that continues. But one pocket where there's been weakness very clearly uh, going back into last year was in the tech sector uh, and the layoffs have been contained there. But what you don't see uh, is a broader uptick in initial jobless claims, seeking an employment insurance. Uh, one reason a lot of these employees may have uh, long periods of time where they have uh, severance pay. Another uh, is that they are finding jobs in other industries very rapidly. Uh, I'll call out Hertz, uh, a company that called out uh, that the positive dynamics this is having into their business model, the abundance of technolo uh, technology engineers and programmers have been a very strong benefit into their mark, uh, into their business model. Rather than relying on more expensive third party, they've been able to bring these in house. So if there could be a silver lining to all these tech layoffs, uh, it would be that they find productive use into other uh, services. And to the extent that you think, uh, the over labor and how many people we had on the payrolls of large technology companies, it may very well be a, a very strong productivity enhancer. We will see. But so far, that is, uh, I think, one good thing coming out of the labor market. Of course, if it stays strong and accelerating, uh, it might just have to induce the Federal Reserve to get more aggressive. We shall see. Uh, none of us know exactly what tool that will take. But for now, it is going in the opposite direction of, of what they're looking for. Uh, moving now to profit margins. So if you look at the stock market and, and look at how it grows from point A to point B, whether that's in the rearview mirror or at the windshield, it's going to be a function of two things. It's going to be a function of how much earnings grow uh, and how much the price to earnings ratio changes. Over the short run, that price to earnings ratio can go all over the board and it'll be the driver uh, by and large over the short run. Over the long run, it's earnings growth that really matters. So as we break down 2022, uh, really the biggest factor in that equation is the profit margin, which began to compress. So overall earnings didn't collapse in 2022. They just uh, really kind of slowed their growth, mostly because of this margin compression. Uh, the first component is the fact that you had uh, producer price index or really cost presser inflation hit the bottom line. Uh, the other would be the labor dynamics, uh, needing to keep people on your payrolls uh, in order to keep the labor that you needed. Of course, we were coming off 2021, a year where there was a real severe shortage uh, in labor. So a lot of employers have that burned into the memory and will even pay up and have extra people more than they need on the payroll for security. And the impact is that you saw profit margins uh, decline. And so that keeps uh, a pressure. And so certainly as 2022 was a, a big down year, one of the biggest factors was a decline in margin expectations. And Andrew, you shared this chart with us uh, showing that it's not just 2022, but the forecast for this year is, is even a little bit more on, on the decline side. Yeah, this chart was looking primarily kind of at the start of each year. That's why a lot of them do look negative. It really isn't that negative when you look at full year. But this is trying to do an apples to apples comparison of of how did margin compression decline within the first essentially kind of month and a half through February 10th, as it shows there on the heading of the chart, look compared to the to previous years 
as Adam noted, um, we started out negative in 2022, and the expectations now for 2023 are pretty low. You can see the, the drop on the far right-hand side of that chart, where companies are expected to see some pretty, um, some compression to their margins. Now, why this matters, not only does this matter as far as the stock selection and sectors we want to have exposure to from the portfolio, but when we also take a step back and look the, the longer term lens, look at the economy, we can see that banks are starting to recognize this potential um, compression in margins for, for different businesses as they begin to tighten their own standards of lending um, for different corporate infrastructure loans. If we look at this next chart, um, this chart goes all the way back to the, to the 1990s. Each one of these bars is one quarter. So we don't have a lot of, of data to look at here. Each bar is, is uh, three months worth of data. Um, but what we can see is this is the number of banks that are raising their standards, tightening their standards for commercial loans. As more banks begin to tighten their standards, they're likely doing this because they feel that there's either some unease within how corporations are ability to pay back those loans, their expectations for economic growth, on and on. But what we know is that when banks begin to tighten these standards, that it typically has led into recessions. If you look at the gray bars that are painted across this chart, you can see that those are the periods of, of economic recessions. We have the tech wreck, financial crisis, the very brief, um, just a couple of month recession following the COVID crash in 2020. Um, but typically as banks begin to raise those standards, um, it starts to put a little bit of a chokehold on not only the, the ability for, for companies to, to grow, but also as kind of a, a barometer into how banks are viewing um, how these commercial balance sheets are. And so we think that these two could very much be tied together as margins are expected to decline this year and banks are raising their standards that this is kind of one in one in the same, but through two different lenses that we could see a little some compression, some, some belt tightening in 2023. We've talked about this on previous market carvers that there is a growing expectation that at the end of the year is when we could start seeing some slowing in economic growth. A lot can happen between now and then. Maybe that does come to fruition, but we're not quite there yet. But we are seeing some of the leading indicators like this one um, that typically does rise to, to 40, 50 percent when we start entering into those recessionary periods. So we're always trying to look, trying to look ahead. What is the market expecting going forward? And obviously, of course, we're always more focused on what the market's doing than the economy. But the economy can give us an excellent insight into some of the implications for the market. And I think that's what this, uh, this data, both these sets of data tell us today. Yes, ab absolutely. And uh, thank you as always, Andrew. And thank you to all of you for giving us these uh, minutes of your time where we get a chance to share uh, some of our insights. And so uh, we do thank you for that. And please, as always, remember, uh, give us a call if we can be of service to you in any way, 800-928-4001. Uh, we'd love to see you or you could scan that QR code. Otherwise, uh, have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.